Hello, Cherie Hansen here. First of all, always gratitude for watching my YouTube video, which I will be posting up on the channel. Uh, also, I would ask you to do a step further and like and subscribe to this channel. It would be fantastic and I would appreciate it so much. Today, I wanted to share with you the thought that came to me when I, the Wim Hof breath just takes me places. <laughs> it's just like, it's like being on the back of a dragon or something, you know, or, or like, uh, <clears throat> the, um, uh, sense of of flying high above my mind and seeing the landscape down below. I got the image today called Pin the Tail on the Enemy. I often think of family systems as gathering around a board game. The game is laid out. It's been laid out by your grandparents, by your ancestors. It's very clear. You know that you've got the thimble or the racing car. That's yours. And this is the board. Let's put it down. Let's, we know what the rules are. But the thing that's interesting is to look at family interactions as a board game. Uh, so many people that I coach tell me the same thing always happens. But what they don't understand is the same thing that happens in their family is not the same thing that's happening in every family. They come to project their particular uh, winning and losing and keeping of points and how you move your person around their, your symbol of self around the board is this way, but it's not in every family. It's a different game. And the one that I was thinking about today is the game called Pin the Tail on the Enemy. So what people do is they try to figure out Close your eyes, put a blindfold on, spin around, and then head out into the room with attack. <laughs> with attack. Get it? You got that? And you are going to pin the concept of this person being your enemy on them because they are responsible for your anger, your grief, your feeling of emptiness. Um, they're the ones. And then the whole family will decide who is the enemy <laughs> this holiday. Oh, it's Brother George. He did this. Oh, he's horrible. And then, oh, no, it's our father. He's the enemy because he's doing this. And so everybody gets all hepped up and adrenalized and excited and, you know, they've got a team they're playing on and this team hates that team. And um, I remember one of my Airbnb guests talked about how his family in Iran always sat down at a holiday table and the war continued between his brother and his aunt. And it was always the same war. One would say the sky is yellow. The other would say the sky is red. And they would argue. And they would argue on different sides of everything. Because that's the game. The game was you're wrong and I'm right. And because you have two people that are willing to play that, <laughs> it can go on for every holiday for every family gathering, for over any kind of food you put out. Um, and they don't even understand that they're engaged in a game. They don't understand that they're in a place where they're blaming their internal emotions. And we talk about this a lot. The locust for growth is either inside ourselves. In other words, I am responsible 
for what I think, for my actions, for my decisions, for my times of being lost in the valley of despair because I'm simply human, or somebody outside of me is doing it to me. And the thing that's so wonderful wonderful in our culture about victim mode is it gives us so much energy. We can hate, we can be frightened, we can feel rage, we can blame, and it's all exciting, it's all fireworks, it's all drama, it's all drama addiction, and you get all the endorphins and all the chemical rewards for that. Instead of being in a place where you go, okay, that person is experiencing something, but it's not going to get inside my fort. <laughs> I got a fort. This is a castle that cannot be stormed. <laughs> it's solid. It's absolutely quiet in here because I've got great insulation. <laughs> and so we need to step back and we need to observe as if you were uh, Jane Goodall <laughs> observing chimpanzees interacting because I often think it's like that. <laughs> Look at them. What are they doing? And she's sitting there and she's writing down. So this helps me so much is I get into a place where I am a social anthropologist. I'm observing myself, <laughs> this animal of me, and I'm observing the behaviors and the thoughts that are arising in me in a mindful way, not to hate on myself or, you know, to feel miserable or to, you know, lower my bucket deeper into the well of victimhood. <laughs> you know, like I, I, can, I can make it worse. I can really lower it down more and more. No, we do that because then we can clearly see what it is that's tempting us, tempting us, triggering us. And we can, just as if somebody came up to you and offered you a cigar to smoke, here you go, here's the cigar of hatred, here's the cigar of racism, here's the cigar of, of lack and scarcity. And you can say very quietly to your mind, <laughs> no, thank you, no. I, I don't want to take that into my lungs. I don't want to take that into my sinuses. I don't want to have those chemicals coercing through my body. So that was the thought that came to me today. Just the whole idea of pin the tail on the enemy. Because I cannot take responsibility for my own emotions. I am a child. I'm going to stay a child. I'm committed to this path of being a six-year-old or a 14-year-old. Or we can go the other way and say, my body, my triggers, my life, my thoughts, my choices. And I come to a place where I am consciously creating who I am. Consciously. It's kind of glorious. It's like having a, a trainer when you go to a gym and they're saying, no, you're, you're lifting that incorrectly. You're not even on, balanced on both feet. But you can be your own trainer and you can observe and you can suggest things to yourself kindly, <laughs> lovingly, compassionately, and you can help yourself become stronger. I am running workshops out of my house this Friday and this Saturday on uh, how the personality works, where we get our decisions from, how we make our choices. The goal is to get people more aware of that kind of subtle influence that's working in our lives. Contact me if you're interested. I do have only a certain limited number of seats 
I also want to ask you again, if you like these video lessons and you think it can help somebody, do send it over to them, share it with them. Also, to like and subscribe would be fantastic. Thank you.